you again or share with others via our YouTube. I would also like to add, if you have any questions for members of our Scholars Central staff team, please use the Q&A function. My wonderful colleagues are standing by and are very eager to answer your questions. So feel free throughout the course of our time together to use the Q&A function. So I would like to start with introducing myself. My name is Jeannie Cadet and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions Recruitment and Persistent at College Park Scholars. I will be a moderator for this evening. We have an amazing panel of student ambassadors who are excited to share with you their stories and their experience while being in College Park Scholars. We also have our Executive Director, Dr. Mary Lee Lindemann, who will share with you a few words of welcome. And now I will turn it over to Dr. Lindemann. Jeannie, thank you so much and welcome everybody. It is really delightful to have the opportunity to spend some time with you this evening. Um, always a pleasure to meet our future Terps and our future scholars. Um, I'm uh, just delighted to have a chance to spend a little time with you um, and to answer questions that I'm sure you have about this very mysterious entity known as College Park Scholars. But the first thing I want to do is echo Jeannie's congratulations to you on being admitted to the University of Maryland and invited into College Park Scholars in an exceptionally competitive year. Our friends and colleagues down in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions report that Maryland received a historically large number of applications for freshman admission and selected an exceptionally talented, diverse, and dynamic group of students. So congratulations, we are impressed and we look forward, we hope, to welcoming you to College Park and to scholars in the fall. We're, we're here to help you in any way that we can as you make your way through the decision-making process. I understand how long and arduous and stressful it is, um, but we've got a great team here led by uh, the wonderful Jeannie Cadet, Cadet and also all those folks who are hovering behind the scenes um, waiting to answer your questions um, and our terrific students that you will be hearing from this evening. I always uh, describe them as our very best advocates and explainers when it comes to helping prospective students understand exactly what Scholars is and how it can enhance your undergraduate experience at the University of Maryland. So, um, I, I, I won't hold things up too long, but I do want to take just a few minutes to, to, to answer, a, to begin to answer a few of the questions that I imagine you might have um, um, as we um, head into this process. First of all, what is College Park Scholars? Secondly, why were you invited into it? Thirdly, what will you get out of it if you accept our invitation and, and join us here? in scholars in the fall. I'll begin with, with kind of a short answer to the question of what is College Park Scholars, sort of the dictionary definition. It is a group of living learning programs for academically talented first and second year students who are selected, invited into the program as part of the university's admissions process. And I'll say a little bit more later about what scholars is sort of more subjectively and interestingly as, as, as far as I'm concerned, but that'll do for now as a, as a sort of placeholder definition. So why were you invited into scholars? Um, well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, we, we work with the Office of Undergraduate Admissions to identify uh, strong prospects for the program. And we, we look for it, we, we look at basically three things as, as we consider, who might be successful and, and, and happy in College Park Scholars. The first thing we look at, as you might imagine, is evident, evidence of academic success and of academic potential, 
right you all cross that bar, obviously. Uh, as I said, a very impressive um, group of students who were invited in um, um, to scholars this year from an academic standpoint. Um, but we're, you know, we're also interested in your potential to do a, a good, strong work in college, okay? The second thing that we look at um, is, uh, and this is in, in some ways as important um, as evidence of a student's um, uh, potential to succeed um, at the university, we're interested in students who come to, to, to the university with a broad range of interests. We, we, we like to see students who are intellectually curious about all kinds of things, not just one thing, but you know, potentially everything. And the reason we're interested in that is that all 13 of the programs in College Park Scholars are interdisciplinary. And also, and this is really important as you, as you examine our programs and think about which one might be um, a good fit for you, our programs aren't necessarily tied to particular majors, okay? As I said, they're interdisciplinary. So they, they, they look at questions, big, meaty, important, complicated questions from a broad variety of perspectives in order to solve complex problems. Um, and that, that's a very important thing to keep in mind. And I also, I, I always encourage students as they're looking at our programs and thinking about uh, what kind of experience they might like to have, to do some thinking outside the box of the major when you're, when you're considering scholars programs. Um, this could be an opportunity to pursue something that is adjacent to your major or complementary to your major or may maybe something completely different. You could be an engineer who was also in the orchestra um, in high school and you don't want to you know completely leave that interest in music behind. So maybe our arts program would 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 be a good fit for you. If you're in business, maybe you have a particular interest in sort of global interests um, and 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 issues. Um, so you might take a look at something like our global public health program or our international studies program. There are so many wonderful possibilities awaiting you. So make sure that you take a good close look at all of them. The third thing that we that we look for when we're considering prospective students for, for College Park Scholars is evidence of, of, of investment and interest in being a part of a diverse, caring community. Um, we're interested in, schol in, in scholars, we're interested in diversity in all of its forms, diversity of ideas, of people, of backgrounds, of where you're from, and, 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 and the kinds of things that you care about. Um, but I, I'm, I'm confident that you'll hear more about this when our, when our students um, um, begin to talk. Um, the, the community aspect of the experience in scholars is, 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 is not an add-on. It's a deeply important thing. Um, we, we want to offer students a really vibrant um, living experience as well as a learning experience. And we want our students to, be a, to take a very active part in, in being members of an active, caring, and intentional community. So um, we, we want you to be interested in engaging in the community, serving in the community, taking on leadership roles in the community, um, and helping to build the community into the vibrant, caring place that we want it to be. So hopefully that gives you sense of, a, a, a sense of what, what were the things about your application um, that made you look like a strong prospect for College Park Scholars. So let's turn to the question of what you what you can expect to get out of College Park Scholars um, if you accept our invitation. I think probably um, the, the first thing most students appreciate about, uh, about College Park Scholars is that it gives you a soft place to land on a very large and complicated university campus. We have a distinct um, uh, geographic home um, on the University of Maryland campus. We're on the north side of campus in a cluster of five buildings, um, that in, uh, six buildings actually, five residence halls and a classroom building right in the center of the quadrangle. So you can point to that and say, that's, that's, that's where I live, that's where my people are. Um, um, so it gives you a, a, a soft place to land, kind of a home away from home. Um, it, it, it also, very importantly, gives you, uh, connects you with a group of people who are very eager to help you navigate the size and complexity of the campus. 
Um, we like to say that in scholars, you will get a sustained orientation to the university and to what it means to learn as a college student. Yes, you're all smart, you're academically talented students, but there's a difference between learning in high school and learning in college. And the people and scholars are very invested in, in making sure that you are ready and able to, 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 to tackle college level, level work, right? So, you, so you'll be able to establish close relationships in scholars, but with, with peers, but also with faculty and staff. Um, one of the things I've most enjoyed about working with scholars is that we, we, we have an incredibly caring, talented, and dedicated group of people who are invested in the success of our students. You won't, you won't be just a number in scholars. We're, we're, our, our faculty are the kind of folks who know names and faces of their students before classes even begin. Um, also, they, they are there to help support you mentor you and connect you to the wealth of amazing opportunities that are available to you as a University of Maryland student. It can be difficult to connect with some of those things um, early in, in, in your college career, internships, for example, study abroad, um, but people and scholars can help you find those things and connect you with the things that, 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 that will really um, enhance your learning and 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 perhaps you know create some cool professional opportunities for you down the line. A final thing that I think students um, can 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 get and appreciate from College Park scholars is that is that it affords you an intentional and and sort of coherent path through the first couple of years of your undergraduate education. Um, it, it it helps to fit all of the very the disparate pieces together. Um, in, a, in, a, in a coherent and meaningful way. Um, when you're taking those general education courses that, that students tend to take in the first couple of years, it's important to, 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 to know that a lot of the courses you would, take, you would take in your College Park Scholars program are going to fulfill those general education requirements for you. So you're not just checking off boxes kind of randomly as you make your way through that first couple of years. They will fit together, we hope, in, in, in a good, meaningful way. So the longer answer to what is scholars um, is for me, as I said, a little bit more subjective, but I use a lot of sort of warm, fuzzy uh, words to try to get at what I see the program really offering to students. I see scholars as a rare and vibrant, wonderful, challenging, nurturing, diverse and engaging place. Um, Scholars was designed, and it's important to understand this, it was designed to engage and to educate the whole person, right? Both the head and the heart. We're here to support the development of our students' abilities in scholarship, of course, but also in their citizenship, um, in their learning, but also in their leadership, in their, in their academic achievement, as well as in their ability to live well with others. So again, that holistic approach um, is a fundamental part of, uh, of what we do. Also, I'm happy to share with you that the coming year in College Park Scholars is going to be an exciting one. We will be celebrating our 30th year on campus, and we will also be welcoming two new programs into our community. The first of those programs is called Civic Engagement for Social Good. Now that's a new name for a program that ha has been known on, on campus as Civicus. It's been around since the mid 1990s, but it is moving into the scholars community this year and bringing its well-established reputation for making change by doing good along with it. And we're really excited. Um, to have um, uh, to have civic engagement for social good joining us in the coming year. The second brand new program um, is called Data Justice. It's sponsored by the College of Information Studies, um, and it will offer students with an interest in computer uh, computer science and information science and related fields 
opportunity opportunities to explore how values and bias are coded into data sets, algorithms, machine learning models, and other socio-technical systems. We're really excited about this one too. Um, um, and really, and looking forward to seeing what um, what uh, what data justice will do for our students and our community community. So be sure to check those out um, along with our other programs on the scholars uh, website when you are doing your due diligence and getting ready to turn in those um, preference forms. So I hope that over the next few weeks, as, as you do that due diligence and explore mo more deeply and ask more questions, you will come to agree that College Park Scholars is an experience and a community that you would like to join. We would very much like to welcome you to the Cambridge community and to scholars in the fall. So please do not hesitate to reach out with uh, questions and concerns as you consider your options. I always like to say that we are, we're really people people in, in, in scholars, so we are eager to talk with you, work with you, get to know you, as you make you make your way through that process. So thank you uh, again so very much for coming. And with that, I will hand it back over to Jeannie. Jeannie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Lee. And so, so let us resume back to our presentation. Okay. So I wanted to share with you all um, a few more things about College Park Scholars and what makes us unique. So we are, again, a two-year living learning program, and we are situated on North Campus uh, in the Cambridge community. We have, on average, anywhere between 70 and 90 students in each of our program every year. So there are uh, three components to what makes us unique and different on campus, right? We offer interdisciplinary learning. So our coursework enriches and complements what uh, students intend to major or minor in. Um, we provide hands-on learning experiences through research, internships, service learning, and study abroad, including some local excursions where you'll be able to explore uh, the greater uh, College Park and Washington DC communities, right? And then we also provide intentional community building, right? Our students uh, will be taking one to two classes with their fellow scholars, and we'll be able to participate in some exciting scholars traditions, such as our service day where lifelong friendships and relationships are forged and endless opportunities for students to engage where they can display their many talents and passions, all right? And also I wanted to add um, that within the community, our students are able to take classes uh, with each other, learn and grow through the colloquium experience that is provided by each program, right? And also they will partake in community building activities uh, that are intentionally structured to create and nurture bonding experiences that follow them well beyond their first two years of college. I also would like to add that uh, our faculty uh, members are easily accessible to our students because their offices are conveniently located in each of the residence halls that make up the Cambridge community, which means that our faculty are just a hop, skip, and a jump away from where our students live and make it easy for them to be able to access uh, you know, their faculty member. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about our programs. So for the fall of 2024, we will have 13 themed interdisciplinary programs that span a range of academic fields and interests, not to be confused with majors or minors, but as uh, Dr. Lindemann mentioned earlier, they can help to complement whatever your intended major may be. So students will be tracked into one of these 13 programs, which we are currently recruiting for. And I like to say that there is a program for every student, regardless of what your declared or anticipated major may be. So 
We currently have our program preference form, which is currently live and open. And so students will have the opportunity to indicate their top four scholars programs by completing the program preference form, which you can access on your student portal. Your program choice does not have to match or reflect your intended major, okay? Some students will even say that their scholars program allows them a break from their major classes, which can be demanding at times, right? And can also provide a positive outlet for them. So once again, here are our 13 programs listed here. And now this is my favorite part of the presentation where we introduce three of our students. Uh, these are our student ambassadors. They also serve as student leaders in our community and are very active and are really excited to share their personal experiences and to help answer some of our more commonly asked questions about what is it like to be in scholars. So at this time, I would like to welcome and invite Halimat, Eileen, and Sam Shrita to our presentation. And we will proceed with our next portion of the information session. Hello, ladies, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. So um, let's start with some introductions, okay? So if you can share with everyone, uh, please, your name, what year you're in, what program you are in, and what is your current major? So I will start with Eileen. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Eileen, I'm currently a sophomore and I'm studying finance and information systems at the University of Maryland. I am also in my second year of the Public Leadership Scholars Program, so finishing up that citation right now. Awesome, thank you so much, Eileen. Uh, all right, Sam Shrita, you're next. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Shrita. I am a general biology major. I'm a senior and I was part of the STS scholars program. Very good. Thank you so much, Sam Shrita. Last but not least, Halima. You're still muted. You're still muted, Halima. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Salimaz. I am a sophomore studying family science at the University of Maryland. I am in the Global Public Health um, Program, as um, Jenny mentioned. And I am just like Elaine. I'm in my last um, semester of scholars. I'm going to miss scholars, but, you know, I'm really excited to, you know, see all the hard work I've done people out there. Very good. Thank you so much, Holly Matt. Okay, ladies, I'm going to ask a series of questions and I will give each of you guys a minute or so to respond, okay? So here is the first question that we have. So what are the some, what are some of the unique opportunities that you will encounter in scholars and share what has been your memorable so far? All right, so Eileen, you go first. Yeah, of course. So I've definitely made a lot of different memories and scholars that I'm very grateful for. But I would say the top two would definitely be being able to meet my friends. And like everyone has mentioned before, this community is honestly something that I would have not have found if I wasn't in the scholars program, especially through the living learning part of it. I met my best friends who lived two doors down from me my freshman year. And in the scholars program, I've, I'm still in touch with a ton of my friends from there because a lot of us are business majors as well. And then also just being able to be so close to my professors and my directors. I know that I don't really get that in big lecture halls. So being able to do that and you know have someone who to kind of mentor and guide you if you need it is super, super important, especially when you're navigating a new environment. So. I would definitely say I would recommend the Scholars Program 100% because of that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eileen. Sam Shreetha, you're next. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with Eileen with um, having, you know, a very close relationship with your directors and professors. Um, that was a really big plus point for me because even now, even after I've completed my scholarship program, I can still reach out to them about a lot of stuff. I even got letters of recommendations um, from one of my directors. And it's nice that you have like a mentor to go back to whenever you need to, even if even if you're out of the scholarship program. Plus, um, the in my program there was very unique opportunities like um, going to iGEM uh, to teach high school students about uh, how to how to teach science to like in a in an easy way so people with no scientific background could understand and help them prepare for their competition. So um, it's not something you would get in a regular classroom. So opportunities like that are very valuable to me. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, Halima, you're next. Um, I would say definitely like um they mentioned the intimacy. I think that college is a very small community, so we all kind of know each other. Your directors really know you because there's about seventy five of you, so they get the opportunity to meet to meet with you one on one, get to know your name, your interests. And another thing that um both they mentioned was opportunities. For example, if you call, if your director sees something that's like, oh, I think this might be so and so's interest, they'll email it to you. They won't leave you in the dark. And I think like college is so overwhelming. Like in one of the general classrooms, you have like fifty classmates, like five, sorry, five hundred classmates. So it's very hard to actually find that one on one time. I think that that's what college is really good at. Thank you. These are all great answers. Okay, next question for you all. Um. In light of uh, students right now, you know, are completing their preference forms and trying to figure out, well, which of these scholars programs is the best fit for me, right? And so they have to rank their top four. Um, if you could share with us, um, you know, what should students consider when researching and selecting programs to preference? And maybe if you have a, an experience that you would like to share with us all, that could be helpful, right, to these students as they're trying to figure out what scholars programs they would like to be in. All right, I will start with Sam Street the first. Um, I would say, at least for my um, decision-making process, I definitely thought that because I'm a pre-med student, I definitely thought that I, I didn't want to do something that's also related to pre-med. I was considering to do global public health. But I thought maybe it would be this would be my chance to do something different um, that might be different from the field that I'm going into. Uh, so I chose STS instead. It's not too different, but it'll also help me complement, you know, what I'm learning now. But I think overall, uh, the main thing to consider is like how much you're interested in the program. Is it something you really want to do or something you really don't want to do? Um, and you can you also get a chance to reach out to the directors if you have any questions about the program. So if it's something like you just have to really figure out, is it for you or not? Because a lot of people have a lot of their own interests. So you can definitely ask and reach out to learn more about the program. Awesome. Thank you. Howie Um, I would say definitely like for me, when it was when it was time for me to choose global public health, I was kind of I wanted to be a public health science major, but um the science courses was like too not for me. So I decided to go public out global public health because it kind of was what I wanted to do. Like this was kind of like some it gave me it gave me like an insight of like what like the major would be like for me. So that's why I kind of learned to other. So for people who like deciding. I think there's two sides to it. I think you just choose something like, that speaks out to you. That's really fun. Like, which of these programs is something that, like, you see yourself having fun in, you see yourself, you know, making friends and not having to worry about it. But then there's the other side, which I say, like, you have to, like, you could pick one that is kind of, like, in line with your major so that you can learn more that you're not learning in your, like, major general classes. You can also get another side of it. Thank you. And Eileen. Yeah, so I would say so public leadership is part of the public policy school. And as a business student, that um, kind of was confusing to me, but I really wanted to try it out because I was interested in the program after researching about it and knowing that I enjoyed having leadership positions in high school and being part of my school's SGA. I was 
really interested in continuing this in college and maintaining those skills and developing upon them. So when I saw the chance to be able to do this through a program, I took it and I ended up loving it. Um, I would definitely say that you don't have to do something that relates to your major because a lot of the things that I'm learning in public leadership complements the business major and the business degree that I'm getting right now. So um, a lot of the majors, uh, a lot of the programs definitely overlap. And I would say like, take this as an opportunity to kind of explore what you like to do outside of what you're learning in your core classes. These are all great responses. Thank you, ladies. Next question. As a living learning program, the scholars isolate you from the rest of campus. Halima, you could go first. Um, I would not say I did not live in a dorm um, trial like my time in college, but I felt very close with people. I think that's called just like why it's in a very good direction on campus. You're very close to some of the schools that UMD offers. You're very close to the gym. You're very close to the um dining hall. So after classes, like me and my friends, we will go to the dining hall, we'll go to the gym. So I don't think it's very isolating because you make friends and those friends introduce you to more friends and more friends. And obviously you have your um general core classes that you have to take and those also introduce you to more friends. So I don't think it isolates you. I just think it allows you to kind of like branch out and those people that you branch out to will then also kind of up your branch out because you're getting to know each other's friends and know each other's cycle like that. Very good. Uh, Eileen? I would definitely not say that Scholars isolates you. So Scholars actually live in the Cambridge community, which is one of the um, li living learning communities on campus, on the north side of campus. And that's typically where a lot of the freshmen are housed. So this is in close proximity to the freshman dining hall, the new dining hall, Yehentemisi. And it's also very close to the other freshman dorms. So I would say like I met friends in the dining hall. I met friends in my general core classes and also just going to classes in the business school. So it's not really a way to isolate you. It's more like you get a lot of community out of it and you're able to branch off with that community into meeting new people. But you know, at the end of the day, you have people to go back to if you don't really have that group outside of scholars. Awesome. Sam Shrita? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Um, I was also going to say that coming into scholars as a freshman, it's almost like a launching pad um, It's uh, because it's a lot of people coming out of state as well. It's really hard to, you know, make the peer groups, make friends. Uh, starting off and I feel like scholars helps you um, kind of start on your journey like that uh, I uh, I remember I actually joined during COVID time so uh, my first year of scholars was all online but e even then I I can say that I pretty much knew everyone in my program just because of those intro classes and when we met on the second year in some of our capstone practicum classes, we were actually able to form closer relationships. And on top of that, I actually commuted. And even then, I didn't feel like it isolated me from campus. Like knowing all of these people from scholars helped me, um, you know, form relationships with people outside of it as well and kind of um, pushed me to be more social, I guess. Great, great. So the next question that I have um, is a common question that we get. And um, what I want to post to you guys is if you could share in your opinion and experience, what makes scholars unique from honors and other special or living learning programs on campus? All right, Eileen, go ahead. I would say that um, scholars is very differentiating and I, we're always going to go back to the word community because at the end of the day is that everyone that I've met, um, I've stayed in touch with. And that's really, really important because I feel like there is that academic aspect of learning and, you know, coming to college and being in a scholars program. But the, there's also that social aspect of how am I going to fit in? How am I going to navigate college, especially your first semester, freshman year? So I think that scholars is a really good 
is a really good way to kind of navigate that process and slowly just make yourself accustomed to living by yourself and being independent, but also meeting new people every day. Um, the staff, the faculty, the students, everyone is so supportive. And I think that I didn't really see that in any of the other programs. So um, I think Scholars is definitely the place if you are interested in ha having that. Awesome. Uh, Sam Shita? Oh, yes. I was, I was going to invite Eileen and the other students to say uh, th th some questions have come up about what happens after scholars, right? It's a, it's a, it's a program for your first and second year, but what yes. happens after that? Sam Shita, do you want to, because you're a senior. Yes. Um, I definitely do want to say that even after scholars, I still don't feel like I'm not a part of scholars. I still sometimes when I introduce myself, like I say, oh, I'm part of the STS program, but okay, I'm an alum. <laughs> but even though I don't have like the classes that I'm going, that I used to go to, um, I definitely still talk to some of the people that uh, were in scholars with me. I still am in contact with my directors. And on top of that, like we, um, we have like the scholars newsletter as well. So that's always providing me with opportunities and you know, different things that are go going on on campus. So I don't feel excluded at any point. Um, uh, like, I just know that in the background, there's always something that I can go back to no matter what. So it's not always about the, you know, are you going to the classes? Are you talking to the people? But there's always events going on. I go to some of them. I go to some of them as an alum. And they're always very inviting. They never say like, oh, you're not part of scholars. So I always go to some of them. It's really nice. Awesome. Um, before I go to Hama, I do have a question that I see that is circulating in our Q&A, and it's, a, it's about internship, research, and study abroad opportunities, right? And so a lot of our prospective students are curious about, um, you know, how has scholars exposed you uh, to the opportunity of um, being able to, whether it's travel or study or, you know, build up your prof professional portfolio early on? Halima, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I guess all of that. That's a really good question because I am in GPH and GPH is very closely connected to the School of Public Health. And in, within the School of Public Health, we have a club called Public Health Beyond Borders, which is basically the goal is to kind of like help reduce health disparities in different parts of the world. And being my director was the advisor of that club and she talked, she talked to us about the club and like what the club has to offer. And this past summer, actually, I got the opportunity to travel to Kenya for a very affordable cost, which is something I really love about scholars. They always find a way for you to do what you want to do without having to worry about the financial um, burden that that might give you or your family. So being able to go to Kenya through my director was really a good opportunity because if you asked me in high school, would I travel to another country? I would say no, but... Being in college has kind of opened me and they kind of gave me leadership. Like now I'm officially a project leader of that Kenya team. So being having a director that's told you information about not only you know, that's not only about your scholars program, but also about other programs as well. That's really helped me travel and do study abroad. And the study abroad I'm using for my path to come, which is the final project um for your scholar program. So it really ties into multiple things. It's really it looks really good on my resume, I would say. And it's really kind of giving me more opportunities for internships and job opportunities as such. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, do the rest of you have any um, thing that you would like to add about internships or research opportunities? Yeah, I can speak kind of on my experience. Um, I'm still a sophomore, so it's still a little bit early, but I would say like my scholars directors were so eager to help us with finding internships along with the alumni from my program who are juniors and seniors that I met through scholars and at the business school um and professor washburn which is the public leadership director has a ton of connections i would go to our office hours meet with her see if she could re review my resume see if she has any connections with people who are interested in hiring people and that is something that is a valuable opportunity that i think i wouldn't have gotten elsewhere and um in our typical schools like the business school the engineering school computer science school you get those resources but it's very helpful to have you know that scholars community to also give you those extra resources because you learn about different opportunities that you wouldn't have had if you weren't in the scholars program. 
That is awesome. Sam Sheetha, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I was going to say, um, just like Eileen said, like our directors always uh, reach out with opportunities whenever there is anything. Um, and one of my experiences is that I, there was an opportunity to be a research fellow within the SDS program. And all I had to do was um, observe, it was basically observing classroom dynamics, part of the education department. And it's not something, it's not the type of research that I usually do, um, which is in science. So I thought, like, okay, maybe this is a good opportunity. And I did that. I did that for one year. Uh, but eventually I got the opportunity opportunity to write, uh, like co-author a paper, which is now published. So that's an opportunity that you don't get very easily and in such a short span of time. So I thought, like, you know, it might be a small opportunity or something that you might not have tried, but because of them reaching out to you, like you don't know what it can lead you to. Awesome. Jeannie, if I may bring in a bring in another question from the QA. Sure. We're getting lots of questions about workload. This is not this is not surprising to me. But uh panelists, what would you say is the average amount of hours uh, a week you spend on studying inside and outside the classroom? for scholars and you know maybe talk a little bit about you know what kinds of do you have to take a lot of extra courses in order to do scholars just talk a little bit about workload and how scholars fits into that for you i can go for this so public leadership like i mentioned before isn't part of the business school but a lot of the classes that i was taking actually counted towards my general education credits and i think that happens with a lot of different programs in the scholars program it's not meant to be an extra burden on you it's really like very manageable i think i probably did maybe at most like 1 to 2 hours per week in scholars work which is nothing at all and i did it with my friends in our dorm room like lounge and it was just a very good way to build community because you have all these you have these assignments but you have all these people willing to help you with them and they all live right next to you so that was really good and um yeah just don't be worried about the workload it's not much and it's very manageable and a lot of the credits count for your general education requirements that you have to do anyway so it's kind of like knocking out two birds with one stone I can add on to that basically Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say, um, just as it complements like your gen ed requirements, it also kind of gives you uh, kind of a chance to not only focus on like stuff for your major, at least that that's how it was for me, because I had so many science classes and labs and all of these things to focus on. I feel like this was my class to kind of really kind of lay back a little bit um, and because of the coursework kind of like fulfilling all your gen ed requirements as well it made my schedule a lot easier the workload a lot easier and it's, at least in my program uh, a lot of the assignments were very interactive so it's not like oh, writing a, an essay writing a paper it's like okay take take a picture of this and analyze it kind of thing so it's nothing that takes up a lot of your time but it also makes it interesting for you it's not a regular English class or like in a regular classroom environment that you have to go through. So it's very manageable. And then to add on to that, I think some that makes um, scholars really special is like we tend to meet one time once a week for an hour and about 15 minutes. That's like how long we really tend to meet. And in my scholars program, and I think in a lot of programs as well, your director try to make sure you get the assignments, like the homework done before you leave the classroom. So like they'll be like, okay, the last, you know, five, five minutes, you can finish your assignments. So by the time that you leave the room or you leave the um, building, you're like, that's one class I had to cross off my to-do list. I don't have to worry about that class. And as um Elaine mentioned, you live with people that are in your program. So if you guys have questions about each other's assignments, you can just always go and knock on each other's door and be like, oh, do you understand that? Do you understand that? It doesn't really require a lot of time, I'd say, because the directors are very knowledgeable that we have other classes, especially our major classes to worry about, to just try to minimize the amount of what that they give us. That is great. Thank you all for sharing. I hope everyone in the audience was, be, was able to absorb and learn 
Um, and I hope this better informs you of who we are as a program and what we have to offer you all. So Eileen, Sam, Shrita, and Halimat, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate you and we appreciate how you represent scholars so strongly um, and so gracefully. Thank you, ladies. And also, okay. we yes. recognize that there, there are dozens and dozens of questions in the Q&A that we haven't really gotten to. Um, but as, as we have said throughout, um, we are here to answer your questions. Um, a lot, some of the questions that are coming up um, would be addressed by, you know, taking a, a, a deep dive into our website to look at the details of each program's curriculum and that sort of thing. Um, but do, so do some exploration, but also feel free to reach out to us um, for, for further conversation. There were lots of questions about housing that I know didn't get answered, but um, the short answer is all of our halls will be air conditioned in the coming year. The one unair conditioned hall, Chestertown, is being taken offline and is going to get air conditioning. Um, so we're going to be um, all of our students will be housed in the four the four halls in the Cambridge community that are currently air conditioned. So just to answer that one, and yes, please visit scholars.umd.edu for more information. Also, a last minute reminder: you still have to apply for housing. Even if you are invited into College Park Scholars, you're, you're, if you apply, you'll be guaranteed a space in the Cambridge community, but you still must apply for housing. That is a separate process. Jeannie, sorry, any, any other loose ends that you would like to tie up? No, that is it. That actually uh, segues into our closing announcements. All right, ladies, thank you again. Okay. All right, so as we resume, I wanted to share with you all some important dates um, and future and upcoming events that we have to provide you with more opportunities to ask questions of us. Uh, the first thing I would like to share with you guys um, is what we call our drop-in office hours. These are all completely virtual and we are holding four sessions over the course of the next two weeks, okay? And so uh, this will provide students with a more up close and personal opportunity to meet with our student ambassadors and central staff members to answer your individual questions, especially as you learn more about our programs and prepare to submit your program preference form. And so you'll also find these dates and links on our website and social media channels. And the first being um, next Monday at 6 p.m. We hope that you can join us at any of these dates. So, so we have some important reminders that we want to make sure that we leave you all with this evening. Um, the program preference form is due for everyone at 11.59 on Monday, February the 19th, okay? And once again, you can access, complete, and submit your program preference form through your TERP application portal, okay? Uh, the next thing that I would like to put on your radar is our admitted student open house. We have three in-person on-campus dates, March 1st, March 11th, and April the 8th. Okay, and this will give you an opportunity to meet with the colleges, uh, to meet with, um, you know, uh, folks in housing, in uh, financial aid and admissions uh, to really get a better sense of um, what the university offers. But there will also be an opportunity for you to hear once again from College Park Scholars and you'll get to meet the individual program directors and their staff as they, uh, you know, uh, provide individual presentations on their programs for you all. And then uh, here at Scholars, we are offering in-person information sessions right here in our community. And so we have five dates listed here throughout the course of the spring semester, March 25th, March 29th, April 5th, April 15th, and April the 26th. Uh, you can learn more about uh, these dates on our website. I would like to add that the program preference form does not 
commit you to the University of Maryland. It simply reserves your spot in scholars should you decide to attend. So I wanted to make sure that I emphasize that we really need to know who would like to um, you know, accept their invitation to scholars and you are doing so by completing our preference form. Okay, um, and so uh, one thing about our um, scholars info sessions uh, is that they are also falling on the same days as the university's Next Stop Maryland days. And these are, um, uh, you know, days uh, where students and families can visit campus. Um, the admissions office will provide you with a tour. Um, it's a very like condensed version of the open house. And so we hold our info session on these dates to make it convenient for families who are traveling, especially um, from out of state, okay? And lastly, uh, we also welcome individual families. If you are in town or would like to learn more about scholars, please uh, reach out and set up an, an appointment to come meet with us. And we are more than happy uh, to arrange a date and time to sit with you and give you more information about our program. All right. Okay. Lastly, I would like to share with you all um, ways to get in touch with us and ways to stay abreast of what's going on in Scholars. So you can always email us. This is uh, a very good way of getting in contact with us, asking questions, is by emailing us at askcpscholars at umd.edu. Uh, we have uh, people on standby to answer your questions or redirect you uh, to somebody who can further assist you, okay? We have our main number and then we have our website, uh, which will be updated regularly um, with upcoming events, dates, and information. And don't forget to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. So this concludes our presentation for today. I can't thank you all enough for taking uh, this time to sit and learn more about the College Park Scholars Program. I'm excited to meet you all in person when you come to campus. Uh, do not hesitate to reach out with any additional questions. And with that, I bid you all a wonderful evening. Thank